Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Nicole Caldwell and I'm really excited to be a part of the team here at the Early Learning and Fitness Academy. So what I'm going to do in this video is tell you a little bit about my background and experience and give you a few samples from some of my classes. So let me turn on my screen share and I will get started on showing you those things. I use the screen share feature a lot with Zoom to show things on my screen to the students. This will also give you a kind of sample of how some of the classes are going to look. All right, I'm gonna kind of move my video to the middle here so you can see me better. Uh, I'm kind of up here at the top. Um, so a little bit about my background and experience is that I have been teaching for about 14 years um, in special education settings primarily. And some of my current certifications that I hold are um, an elementary education teacher certification, all, all grade levels special education teaching certification, Montessori teaching certification for lower elementary, which is ages six to nine in a Montessori program, and pivotal response teaching or PRT, which is a really cool student-centered, um, developmentally appropriate um, autism intervention strategy. So um, speaking of autism, that is where most of my experience lies. I do have a master's degree in special education with an emphasis in autism and also a PhD in special education with that same concentration. So I work a lot with students with autism and other learning differences, and that is what I absolutely love and adore doing. So I'm gonna show you some of my samples now from my classes. Oh, I did forget to mention. The little cutie there in the picture is my is my son. This was a couple years ago. He's 12 now, about to be 13. I can't believe it. Um, but he is my favorite, of course. So I'm gonna show you next some of the samples from some of my classes, and then I'll kind of walk you through a, an, an example lesson. So these are some student work samples from a 3D modeling course. Um, 3D modeling is something that I actually really love teaching and I find that my students with autism are actually generally super amazing at this. So I think these are all three, yes, these were all three made from some of my students with autism. The two on the left side of your screen, the house model and then the windows on an exterior of a home, those were made by two of my high school students with autism. Um, using different programs. One of them is kind of a more intro level program, which is the more colorful one with the houses, the, the house and the palm tree. And then the middle one there is a program called SketchUp that a lot of professional architects use. So one of my students was learning that program and doing an amazing job. And then the one on your far right, you'll see there with the fish and the kind of the octopus um, looking, it's actually kind of like a, an underwater research station sort of from a children's show that he really likes. This was one of my younger students with autism who made that one. I think he was about seven at the time. And that's using a free program called Tinkercad. So there's lots of fun 3D modeling programs that I like to teach with. And I think this is a really good skill because it lets kids be creative, but it's also a really good, you know, vocational skill down the line if they're interested in pursuing that further. That's one of my favorite things to teach. I love teaching everything actually. So um, next, I'm going to show you, I just have a few samples from a science class right now because I'm going to walk you through a science lesson at the end. Um, but these are some samples from a science lesson we just did this week with my class. Um, we kind of did a holiday theme, so we did some candy cane science activities um, for both. These are for both my elementary and middle school class. I kind of put them both up here. My middle schoolers really enjoyed this puzzle of which piece is longer for this candy cane. We talked a lot about that for a while actually and did figure out how can we measure it to find out because this one's curved and it's actually really surprising the curved piece is longer it's very fascinating um and so then the next one you'll see there is kind of um, the two on the bottom are from an experiment that we did in both my elementary and middle school classes we kind of had a different focus on each we did kind of the classic um baking soda and vinegar experiment but we did it with candy canes in the middle of it so it looked really cool on camera when we did it. Um, for the younger kids, we focus more on just, you know, making a prediction and what do you think will happen and then just watching the cool um, sort of eruption. And then in my middle schoolers class, we did the same experiment and we talked more about, you know, physical properties and chemical properties and watched a video about physical changes versus chemical changes and talked about what's happening when we did that experiment. So it was kind of fun for all of my different um, ages in my classes. 
So the next samples I'm going to show you are some samples from my art lessons. Um, I teach art lessons for younger kids, <clears throat> excuse me, and I focus most on um, kind of creative expression and basic skills like colors and shapes, um, as well as fine motor development, which art is amazing for. So I'm just gonna walk you through a few, I have a few slides um, for art samples. Um, this was from a sample from, we just did kind of a basic shapes lesson and directed drawing of how we can use shapes to make different um, objects and animals. This is just one page from a whole book I had of these ideas and the students loved it. So we would take each page and they would draw on it and then they will hold up their pictures to the camera to show everyone and they love showing everyone their work and seeing everyone's drawings. It's really, really fun to see them share. So uh, this was another example of an art lesson we did. A lot of times with my classes, what I will do is we'll kind of have a brief intro to the topic and then I'll read a really engaging children's story to them and then we will do an art activity based on the book. So these are some pictures here from an art lesson I did with the book, I'm Not Just a Scribble by Diane Alver, which is really a fun art book. And so what you'll see there is kind of my intro slide and then a picture of the book. And then after we read the book, we were going to make our own scribbles on paper. So I like to have a lot of you know, visual supports so that the students can see exactly what they need and what they're going to do. So you'll see there, there are some um, you know, pictures of the paper and the pencils and the materials that they will need. And then the last picture that you'll see there is, we often do an activity on paper and then we do a digital version as well. So this one was, we kind of had a scribble already on screen and these little faces were available as downloads from the author's website that are, they look like the faces in the book so they could pick a face they wanted to put on the scribble. That was just kind of a fun activity we did at the end. Uh, the next art lesson I would like to show you is we did one, an artist study uh, based on the Japanese artist Yayoi Kusama. And so she uses dots to make most of her art. And so that was really, it's really fun for the students to do this one, they love this one. Um, so you can see there, there's kind of my intro slide. We're going to make art with dots. Ooh, what's this? Can you tell what this picture is made with dots? Ooh, and we get really excited about it. And then I read them this really fun children's story about the artist. And one of her most famous pieces of artwork is these pumpkins. So you can see there that the pumpkins have, you know, the dots on them. And we made a digital version of it where they can just drag those groups of dots and put them on the pumpkin. And we also drew their own on paper, which is kind of the last picture you'll see there in the bottom right corner. I'm sorry for the poor image quality. This was a student holding up their picture to the Zoom camera to show everyone and I just took a quick screenshot of it. So um, it was amazing and he did an awesome job. All right, so those are my samples from my lesson. I'm gonna kind of you know, give a little brief overview of an example lesson for my elementary science class kind of now. It's gonna be a very shortened version. So of course it would have all the components of it and be longer in person, but just for, uh, to make the video brief, I'll just show a little sample of it. So I usually have kind of just a welcome slide. Um, I start my classes just so the kids, you know, just to get us going and make sure everybody can see the screen. I check in to make sure they can see the pictures just to make sure we're all set before we start. Um, so, hey my friends, I'm so excited that you're here for our science class today. So I know we've been talking about animals these past couple weeks. And today we're gonna learn something really cool and special about animals. We're going to talk about animals and how their tails help them. Oh, so can anyone guess what animal this is? That's right, it's a possum. And so we can see that he's hanging by his tail. That's one of the things animals do with their tails. Let's see if we can find some more. So different animals have different tails that help them do things. Oh, so what do we think this monkey is doing with this tail? Yeah, maybe he's getting a drink of water. Very cool, nice job, my friends. All right, so we're gonna start today by playing a guess the tail game. So we're gonna look at different pictures of tails and see if you can guess which animal they're from. Let's see what the first one is. Ooh, whose tail is this? That's right, it's a fish, nice job. All right, let's see what the next one is. Ooh, hmm, I wonder whose tail this is. I think you're right, it is, it's a squirrel. Awesome job. We would do a few more of these, but um, just to keep us going. So, like all the other parts we've talked about, animal tails come in all shapes, colors, and sizes. So let's think about why animals need tails. I wonder what they can do with tails. Let's see. 
Ooh, so tails are used for balance. They help the kangaroo stay balanced when they're walking or jumping. Tails are used for swimming. So we've seen animals like beavers and dolphins, they use their tail to kind of like a paddle while they swim. Tails are also used for grasping. So we've seen animals that can hold onto a branch with their tail, and that's really helpful for them to hang from the trees or move around or make sure they stay on a branch when they want to stay on. All right, my friends, so we're gonna learn some more about what animals do with their tails by reading a book about animal tails. Oh my goodness, let's look at this book. The title is, What If You Had an Animal Tail? Hmm, what do we think this book is going to be about? Let's look at the title and the cover, and we'll make a prediction or a guess about what we think is going to happen in this story. And then I'll kind of let them make their guesses and we'll talk about it. Um, and then I'll usually read, um, well then I will read the book. I'm not gonna guess read it today, um, but I'll just show you. These are a couple pictures from this story. It's really fun and the kids absolutely love it. Um, so then after we've read the book at the end, we usually do kind of a, an activity that lets them respond in some way. So for this, um, this time we did this in class, it was to draw a picture of you with an animal tail. So we talked about which, which animal would you wanna be? And then they could draw their picture. Um, and just like we do in art class, then they could hold it up to the screen and when they do that, I turn off my screen share feature so that everyone can see a bigger picture of everyone holding up their work and they love to share. All right, so I am gonna turn off my screen share at the moment, um, but I just wanted to really thank you for watching this video and checking out the Early Learning and Fitness Academy. So I'm really excited to work with your child and I hope you have a great day. Thank you again for watching.